So good afternoon, everyone. Um, today the, we discuss about the uh, the building envelope. Today we focus to discuss about the window, and especially we focus on to discuss about the punched window and storefront design. So we looking at the uh, how we designing about uh, this first the image looking window system, and then why we need to design that this angled the window framing for the elevation. So we are discussing about uh, this project as the, our case study project. So the, we can consider about the three basic window type in architecture industry. The punched window, it is most a typical window type and the storefront is located on the ground level because storefront function to attract the visual attention to the business. And the curtain wall, the, if you want to make continuous grazing, you can use a curtain wall design. It is mostly using from mid size, mid rise to high rise building. You better understanding about uh, these the three different the window type here. The punched window it is locating the floor to floor and floor to floor and storefront is so uh, locating on the ground level and then curtain wall it has in the continuous profile. Okay, so you better to understanding what is difference between the punched window and curtain wall from the section. So you can see the section here. This is a slab and slab and slab. Cortinal, the glazing, the locating over the slab edge and making out the continuous profile. However, the punched window and the locating the between slab to slab to the accent the the articulating the this the elevation and then you just kind of understanding about the what is difference between the punched window and the cortinal. Okay, the punched window always locating floor to floor and the cortinal having the more continuous profile, the front of the slab edge. So now we talk about the window assemblage. When you're designing the window, you should consider the energy performance and the design aesthetic. So you already know about the design aesthetic part. So, but we also have to be concerned about the, this energy performance. The major energy is mostly loose from the building opening, which is the window and the door. It means you need to be design opening very carefully. It is always the most tricky and difficult detail for your wall assemblage. But we talk about the, these, the, the energy performance and detail assemblage next year. But today we more to understanding about the concept of the window. So punch the window, we talk about the punch the window first. So punch the opening, it consists of the window frame and the grazing. It is called as the grazing unit. Okay, it's just a grazing and unit. Okay. So we always have to be considered about when you're considering about the punch the window, you have to be consider the frame and grazing together, and then it is called as the grazing unit. Also, we have to be know about the, some the the component, which is a terminology. How we can say window top frame? How we can say the dislocation? It is called as window head. Okay, please memorize this terminology. I think it is also we using this terminology a lot when you talk with uh, the subcontractor, which is the window contractor. And how we can call the window side? It is called as window jam. Okay, please know about this. And then how we can call the window at bottom. It is called window seal. Okay, just kind of summarize the, this terminology. Window top, we can call it as window head. And then window side, we can call it as window jam. And then window bottom, we can call it as the window seal. Okay. Please understand about the, these three terminology and memorize these term three terminology. So, the punch the window has a two unit type. One is fixed unit, and the second one is the operable unit. In a fixed window, glass is fixed in a mullion, which is the fixed in a frame. So we can call this part as the the fixed unit, which is the fixed into the this frame. 
and we can also consider as the operable unit. It is operable unit. It requires operable part for the ventilation. It has the various type of operable unit. So I just got introducing about the various operable unit today. So we start to talk from the awning window, okay, which is the, you can see the awning. And we talk about the casement, and also talk about the hopper, and also talk about the pivot window today. So let's talk about the awning. The awning window, the awning window hinge is locating the top part, okay? The hinge is locating and window is opening like this side. It's already or, always open outside from the inside and then it is moderate weather protection when it open. So when you're opening the weather actually you can protect from the rain, right? And snow. And then it is also egress possible only with a special hardware kit. So we talk about this one a little bit later. And then it is difficult to clean up from the inside because when you open that and then it's hard to clean up the outside of the window grazing. And also it's not for use next walkway. So this is a walkway, and then your window, awning window here, when you open it, it actually distracting the public circulation from the this region. It's not allowed to using the this the awning window right next to the walkway. But now we talk about the egress possible only with a special hardware kit. So what is about the egress? We have to be know about the egress. When you're having the fire emergency issue, people have to be escaping from the, your, your place. This is a weekend called as the egress pass. The window is the part of the, your egress pass. The basement and the sleeping room below the fourth floor of the, your building should have at least one exterior emergency escape and the rescue opening. So you can just kind of better to understand here. So that's why you can only see, always see the this opening at the basement. And then below the fourth floor, we have to be provide the egress pass from the sleeping area. Once again, I just kind of summarize one more time about the, this egress pass. The basement and the sleeping room below the fourth floor, the fourth floor should have at least one exterior emergency escape and the rescue opening okay so it means the actually the the ladder which is the fire truck ladder can reach up to the 75 feet so it means people actually can escape from escape from the 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 below the 50 75 feet okay but that's why when you just kind of categorize which one is high rise and which is the just kind of a normal middle rise building over 75 feet it is called as the high rise it is more requirement for the egress the issue the egress the code more than 75 feet height but anyway when you just kind of have a more less than fourth floor you should provide egress passageway from the your the window so from the, this region when you have an awning so how people can escape from the inside through the, your awning window? In this case, you have to be have special hardware kit because people it's hard to getting out of the this the small opening from the this region. You have to be taking out the this window, it's an awning window, and people then people can escape from the this the opening here. Uh, I just kind of bring the one video. It is much better to understanding about how people can escaping from the the heavy rubber space to the outside and how fire truck had access and how people can the escaping through the the lift temporary lift machine from the fire trucks so let's watch the, this video first and then i also bring it out another video to talk about the country they we more to consider about the safety issue and egress issue so that's why the next video introduce about how we can the escaping from the building with a new technology and then it is kind of a little bit interesting way to escape it, it is called as evacuation shoot so it means people actually can escaping from the building right away using the this the like a evacuation shoot so let's watch the these two video i think we better understanding about how we can escaping from the space when it has a fire and emergency issue but code wise we talk about the, this code issue the later, not this semester, 
what about the egress passageway and how we actually consider and provide egress passageway for your design the following the IBC but now you understanding about the video and then so you just getting the some concept of the egress right now okay let's watch the video When it comes to having an effective evacuation plan for emergencies, how prepared are you? If your company has a large number of employees in a multi-storey building, then the most important factors to consider and manage are how to get everyone out quickly, efficiently and safely. That's where the VertEscape Escape Chute comes in. It's a vertical escape chute that can be installed to any multi-storey building. In the event of an emergency, employees file out to the pre-installed escape chute storage or deployment container. Open the hatch, release the chute, and climb into the elasticized vertical chute. Once inside, the evacuee starts moving down the chute, easily using a combination of their hands, arms, and feet to adjust the speed of their descent by applying internal pressure to slow down and releasing pressure to speed up while their weight is fully supported. The super strong yet lightweight material of the chute also protects the evacuee from fire whilst still allowing air to freely circulate. Once they reach the ground, the evacuees exit the chute and make their way to safety. As many as 25 employees may be evacuated every minute. So next one is casement, the operable unit. The casement, it is swing outward or inward, is open the both side, 
it can be outside, it can be inside. Okay, and then hinge is the side. And then it is poor weather protection when you open. When you open it, the water is directly coming into your space. And then this egress possible. And then it is outswing. It's not for use the next to the walkway. It is same as the the previous one because when you open it, it's distracting the public circulation. The next one is hopper. The hopper is hinge is inside. It's open inside. Okay, this is open inside. You can see. So this is not open outside, it's open inside. So this is a good weather protection when it open because the, this is open the inside. And then this egress possible only with a special hardware kit. It's hard to get in out of the place. This is a have to be detached over the, this opening and then using the hardware kit getting out of the, this opening and unit. And the people can escaping from the, this location when it has the emergency issue. The next one is a pivot. The pivot, the swing from the center, the pivot point. There was some pivot point here. There's a hinges here, and then hinges a pivot point in the center of the frame. Um, it is poor weather condition when it open, so water is easy to getting in, and the water is easy to getting in. It's also very difficult to egress from the, this window because it's very small opening. But when you're just kind of using the, this pivot door as the, uh, the egress pass, you have to be using a huge the pivot door when it even open. People can escaping from this opening. Now we talk about the grazing. The grazing is important to decide because it is directly related to the, your the creating performance. Um, grazing is a major element of the window unit, so you should consider next three terms for your glass selection. First one, transmittance, and second, absorption, and third, refraction. So what is this meaning of the grazing system? So you can understand about the, this is your sun and solar energy here. Sun is coming into the, your grazing. And then when sun is kind of uh, meeting the, your surface of the glass, some of the solar energy, the refracting from the surface, it is called as the refraction. But some of the glass just passing through the glass thickness and then some of the solar energy absorbing the energy into the this thickness. It is called as absorption. Okay, you can say absorption. But some of the solar energy, the refracting absorb, and the last of the solar energy passing through, it is called as transmittance. Okay, so we have to be concerned about the grazing with the solar energy. How much transmittance happening from the sun? So it is kind of a understanding. How much you can make in the comparable space inside it's so depending on the transmittance you can decide so you have to be get rid of the this solar energy as much as possible from the your the grazing layer if you have 100 percent solar energy passing through your space getting hot and very hot and then it feel very uncomfortable so from the, this region you have to be controlling the this solar energy and then your glass have to be performed this part so just kind of sending up about this solar energy 100%. And if you have in a single grazing house, single grazing without uh, any film, the refraction is only 8% and absorb absorption is only 5%. 87% is transmittance from the solar energy. It's a lot actually. But when you simply have in the one film, we can call it as the low coating. So this is much thinner the human air and also be the trans transparent the film but simply over the window surface it increased the, the performance so we can see they have a solar film the you uh, low coating film here the having the 52 percent reflection and then 11 percent i'm sorry 37 percent absorption so only 10 percent is transmit from the 100 percent solar energy it means this glass is much better performance compared to the, this glass Oh, uh, you can see that this different grazing type, the single grazing, and then you can see the double grazing without the without the low e coating, and then this is a triple grazing with the low e coating, and then this is a double grazing with the low e coating. Of course, this one is the best performance, and then this is the worst performance. Of course, cost is this is the highest, and then this is the lowest. So this is kind of an understanding about how depending on the budget, depending on the required. The, the R value and U value, 
you have to be choosing the proper grading type also you have to be considered about the budget for the project so now we talk about the u value u value r value u value it is the inverse relation with the r value so when you're measuring about this solar energy and then when you're measuring about the the grazing performance you should use the u value the u value measure the rate of heat transfer what is the meaning higher u value means more heat coming from outside lower e value which is the the lower heat transfer happening so it means higher u value and lower u value which one is kind of better performance you said about the higher u value means higher heat transfer is more heat is coming out from outside so it means it's the worst is kind of lower performance so it means the higher u value having the low the performance of the glass lower u value is a much better performance u value and performance of the glazing okay so this is a least stroke of the r value okay r value and the one divided by u and u value divided by the r so this r value and u value is kind of least reciprocal the value so from the this region you remember about the higher r value is resistance so it means higher r value is better performance but u value lower value lower the lower u value has the better performance okay you just kind of have to be understanding about the, this relationship okay if you want to make a better perform the world system you have to be consider higher r value and lower u value okay so you, are, you can see the lower the u value it is the better insulating the structure All right So basically from the, this idea and you can just can see the this table this table you can see the u value and r value you can see the different grazing type and you can see the visible light transmittance which is the vt and then this is the ratio of the visible light passing to the amount of striking the glass and how much lighting passing through the your glass and then this one is uv lighting here and this is the solar heat gain coefficient which is the hshgc and how much heat gain some from the outside so you can just kind of compare in the single grazing system it is the one u value and one r value and then the visible light transmittance is only is about the 90 percent most about the writing passing through and the solar heat gain coefficient is about the 0 0.86 so means less of uh, the heat gain from the outside we can see that this one the double grazing system with a low key coating this is 0.25 u value and 4.0 r value so means this is about four times better the performance comparing the single grading system also visible light transmittance this is 71 percent only so comparing to this one less writing passing through so also you can see so light gain is about the, this single grading system 0.86 and then double grading system with a low coding is about the 0.39 so much less solar heat gain from the outside so from the this region you can simply understand about the performance depending on the u value and r value and depending on the grazing type so you have to be choosing the proper grazing type to making the better performed the building so now we talk about the different frame system so we talk about the wood steel aluminum and the plastic material let's talk about the frame here the wood frame the wood frame it is compared to vinyl or fiberglass wood frame requires more maintenance it is still having the warm athletic it's very warm athletic also it's good insulating for property because it's low conductivity material however it is has a lot of maintenance because wood is breathable and live material it is easy to expand and contract in response to the weather condition what is happening even this so uh, this one is the wood frame and then this one is the glazing but this wood expanding and shrink the between the wood and the glass the this gap is getting bigger so it means when you're getting bigger and then the air very easy to flowing through the this small gap 
That's why you have to be considered this gap very well. If you fail, you lose the heat energy a lot. So from the this region, you have to be adding the silent and back road every single year if you have some problem. So that's why it requires the loss of maintenance. Aluminium. Aluminium is the most common window flame in design the building because it has the strong and attract the profile. If you are making a very thin profile, we need to use the aluminium. Okay, so that's why most the high-rise building and the most designed building using the aluminium profile because it has the attractive profile and the architect loves to using it, and also it has the the strong material and the weather weather resistance material as well, and it also available the different color and also it has the the pretty expensive compared to the other the framing system, but you have to be know about the, this one has the the good thermal perp, the conductivity which is the aluminum here lots of heat energy losing from inside and then lots of solar energy gain from the outside so because about the aluminum itself it is good conductivity material from the nowadays we consider to use the thermal break window what is about the thermal break window you can see the window frame here so this is an outside and this is the inside you can see that this the green space what is about this green space? It is made by the rubber gasket. And then you can just kind of think about this one single frame, you lose the loss of heat energy because about the, the high conductivity material. That's why the concept, the outer layer of window frame and inner layer window frame totally separating, but it is have to be connected by the rubber gasket. So meaning the rubber is very low conductivity material. From the region, you can separate outer layer, inner layer, through the this rubber gasket. So when you're just kind of using the this thermal broken window, you can increase the the window performance. Also, you can actually protect the condensation because it's separating outer layer and inner layer. You remember about the dew point and condensation from the the last the class. So you just kind of understand the concept. But when you're just kind of having the this the green zone, which is the rubber gasket, which is a broken thermal broken window, you can still the separate outside and inside and increase the, the window performance and then reduce the, the thermal conductivity from outside to the inside, inside to the outside. The next example is plastic. The plastic is cheaper option, but this is also very popular the the architecture frame material, but it's not very useful to using the high rise and the the high-end architecture, but still, kind of a middle size and middle the the price range. Plastic is still the very very popular material to use. Um, but becoming the more common and it is good thermal resistance because it is low conductivity material and is also high coefficient of the thermal expansion. That's why this lots of a good aspect. But uh, still, uh, it has to be developed the more design aspect. Next example, GFRP, which is glass fiber reinforced plastic. It is stronger than the plastic. So if you're just getting the stronger the, the window frame, but still having the similar the quality, you might consider about the GFRP. So next one is steel and mountains. The steel, Frame is possible to make in a very slender frame because of the strength. However, it is the collagen issue. When you expose the weather, it's very easy to make in some rust. And it's easy to close, uh, it has the collagen issue for the outside. From the this region, when you're using the this steel, you have to be have coating and painting, which is a waterproofing coating and painting to protect the this the rusting issue. However, so this coating and painting, it is periodically the maintain, maintain the, this issue. So that's why this is like wood, you should maintain uh, this, the, the framing the more periodically. So this one is thermally conductive than wood and plastic, but less than aluminum. Okay, what about the mountains? So mountains, you might be pretty familiar with the uh, divide the framing window 
This window frame was used when large size of the glass was not available. And historically, it's hard to make the huge glass. So probably this reason, they just kind of more articulating the frame and they just kind of put the small size of the glass into that. However, nowadays we can just make in the larger window, the larger size of the glass is more common. That's why for these times, it's more decorative, the purpose, rather than this historical reason. Okay. Also, we talk about the different the window framing type. So you can just kind of see that these two, the joint type, one is the recessed frame, one is the exposed frame, depending on the, your the design proposal and design aspect. Sometimes you can totally recess the frame into the wall. Sometimes you can expose the window frame to the outside, inside. This is a totally up to your design point. So you better understanding about these two projects here. The left image, uptown phase two project, right image. So we already discussed about the, this project from the last semester. It is Clara Street project in San Francisco. The left image, you can see the this frame is totally recessed into the wall. So it means you only see the glass from the outside. But right side image, you can see the framing. I mean, this is more about emphasizing that this framing from the outside. So that's why this is a different two design scheme. But de depending on your design scheme, you can choose either the recessed frame or exposed the frame. So you can just kind of more understanding about this detail drawing here. The left one is the uptown project. You can see the window here, and then we use the, this exterior creating here. You can see this exterior creating, and then this exterior creating totally hiding the this window sill and window head here. So that's why from the outside you only see the window, the glass. Okay. So also in the bottom, we actually have a drop ceiling zone. So from the this region, you're not gonna see the this window head. You only see the window sill here. Okay. But what about the this Clara Street project? We intentionally extrude out from the surface, and then this is a window plate to holding the. The, this window frame, we intentionally expose to the these the the window frame. Okay, so it means you can more emphasize that this box condition from the outside. So you can say hide the frame or the expose to the frame. So this is a, depending on the, your design scheme. It requires different the detail for the design. Okay. So next example, how you making you know, this angle, the window, you see the, this angle, right? Um, if you need to design in the angle of the facade, you can use a special window frame. So you can see the this is a window frame here. This is an angled window frame. It's easy to adjust the angle and depending on the required angle from the designer. So you can just kind of adjust and fix the, this, the, the board and then you can install and construct the this proper the the glazing from the this frame uh, now we talk about the window frame it is the weakest point for the water and wind penetration between the outside and inside you can see that this the diagram you see the red zone here the red zone means you're using lots of heat energy through the, this opening so from the this region, you have to be very careful to design the this building envelope to protect the losing the heat through the opening. Okay, you can say framing around the opening, it is a weak point. So you can just kind of having the possible option here. This is a window head part. So you see the window head, and then this is a framing. We always have the gap between. This is a kind of weakest point of your window. So from the this region, you have to be protected by the fan flashing and sealant and silicone. You have to be making the very air tightness of the, this part. So you have to protect air flow through the, this part. But don't too much worry about the, this assembly. We're going to talk about the, this assembly next year. But uh, just kind of understanding about the concept, why you have to be sealed very carefully for the, this opening at the window, the seal, window head and window jam and next example you can see so this is a window jam here so you have a window frame and then this is a wall assemblage 
the between the zone you have a lot of happening for the air penetration so from the, this region you have to be very well to designing about this area you see here you know, they have to be designing about the cylon the back road and fan flashing actually protect the, this corner condition so means you have to be more to considering about the, this the airflow through the, this air tightness idea and also you can just find out the window the seal which is the windows seal and then wall construction here in this case you can see the also sealant and you can also find out the these the fan flashing design okay, i can zoom in a little bit more so this fan flashing design actually protecting the, the air and water penetration and then this sealant helps to the providing air tightness between the the air flowing from the outside protecting from the this one okay so you can just kind of better understanding about uh, this diagram so you can see the left image here so this is the opening and uh, this is uh, a punched window unit but you have to be provide this fan flashing all around your opening okay and then this is actually providing the air and water penetration through and then after that the, this window unit just kind of uh, the plugging into the opening after that, you need uh, another the fan flashing, which is the free line stick flashing, which is the sticker type, the aluminum fan flashing or metal the galvanized fan flashing. But this one is kind of covered and then wrapping all around the opening. And then, so you can see that this is a waterproof membrane. So this kind of fan flashing detail, the protect the this joint condition, and then it protect air and water flow between outside and inside okay so just kind of understanding about the, this concept why we need a pen flashing and how what is about the, this works now you have to be understanding this concept and then later you have to be draw how you actually detail out the waterproofing membrane and fan flashing relationship and how window meaning the wall assemblage and how you can actually meeting the fan flashing and waterproofing membrane time so we just kind of more to discuss about the, these the detail the next year but now just understanding about the fan flashing detail why we need it how relating with the, the waterproofing membrane and this one we already a little bit are interesting from the the brick veneer design in the 346 and 546 class so you probably back to this lecture again which is i think a lecture lecture one you just kind of getting the more information to designing about the how it works about the fan flashing, how it works in the waterproofing membrane, how it overwrapping together, right? You remember about the fan flashing here and the waterproofing membrane have to be overwrapping each other, which is not overwrapping. You also having the gap there, so you're losing the loss of uh, the you have a chance to getting the water, you have a chance to getting the air into that. That's why it's overwrapping each other to protect the air and water penetration. So next next video. It is more interesting about the different trim type in architecture industry. So we're watching the, this video together and then we discuss about the store front design. Hi, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today we're going to be talking about 10 twists on window trim. Trim is a standard vehicle for hiding joints where materials come together. The edges of sheetrock are a good example. Trim can also set a building in a particular time period. But to me, the more integrated even a small detail such as trim is with an idea about a place or structure, the more it can support the overall logic of a building. In a space dominated by the view, this steel window system has been designed to get out of the way. Note the dark tone of the frame which recedes, and the narrow sight lines. The idea is supported by the trim surrounding the window, which is equally minimal. It's just enough to conceal the fastening of the windows to the structure, but no more. The trim complements the interior palette, which oscillates between the cool steel, stone, and concrete, and the warm Douglas fir, and highlights the thickness of the wall plane. Facing the view in the harsh winter winds, this room is both light and open, but also confidently structured. You sense the space's ability to resist the rugged site's forces, with a heavy floor and well-proportioned, closely spaced columns. The module of construction is dictated by the fir posts, and each window assembly fits precisely within the structural bay. The crisp dark steel is bridged by a thin band of wood linking the window back to the structure. Paring down the window trim to a very thin band reinforces the window's place in the order of the exterior wall, which is subservient to the structure, while allowing maximum light into the space and preserving the delicate nature of the windows. 
An extension jam is the interior portion of the window frame that extends to the full depth of the wall. A common treatment of the extension jam is to paint it the same color as the wall or window surface. Here the architects have emphasized the wall depth and opening by choosing to contrast the clear finished wood window with the surrounding painted sheetrock wall. This highlights the windows as distinct architectural elements in the wall assembly and brings in a natural wood component. There are a few different methods for achieving this type of look. One is to return the sheetrock into the opening and apply the wood extension jam on top of the sheetrock returns. Another is to relieve the back edge of the trim board enough to cover the gap between sheetrock and window. Either way, the look feels rooted in tradition while remaining stripped down, modern, and clean. Here we see another play on the wood extension jam idea with natural wood outlining the window openings. This treatment tends to work well in complex spaces where there are many things competing for attention. The view, the cabinetry, skylights. Here the windows fit into a system of elements that are given importance by their treatment. The cabinetry and windows share the same material, a warm reddish wood, and very similar, finely crafted details. They are perceived as part of a family of bespoke elements in the overall building composition. A thin shadowed line surrounding the window frame describes another contemporary approach to window trim. This one acknowledges the difference between window and wall, but ever so subtly. Reveals can be created by using different extruded trims at the edges of the sheetrock surrounding the window. These trims come in various widths and are fabricated from either metal or vinyl by manufacturers like Pitcon, Fry Reglet, and Trimtex. The reveal enables one to achieve a planar look to the wall without the added dimension of trim protruding outward. It's a thoroughly modern aesthetic that quietly showcases the window frame as an opening without the fussiness and associated stylistic hang-ups of trim. The sheetrock finishing costs are higher with this type of treatment, but if it's a tailored modern look you're after, this one's for you. If the goal is to call attention to the opening itself or the window frame, choosing a drywall return is a no-hassle way to trim your window. This can save on finished carpentry and preserves the planar wall aesthetic without the need for reveal trims. This process is often used in commercial construction. It entails wrapping or returning the sheetrock at the window perimeter back to the window frame. This takes the traditional place of the wood extension jam and provides a clean, no-frills look. Drywall returns highlight the views and openings very well but lack detail of any sort, which for some spaces wouldn't be appropriate. In this project, the architects extended their attitude about trim everywhere. Note the base and crown conditions. They make perfect sense in this modern, minimalist space focused on the view. Care must be taken during the sheetrock finishing stages in projects like this, as this surface will be the final window finish. If the drywall return look is too stark for you, consider adding a deeper sill of contrasting wood or stone. It will add texture, color, and shadow, and can be a fine place to place plants, objects, or personal effects on. This bathroom has sheetrock returns at the head and jams, but has a darker stained oak sill sometimes termed a stool. Look closely for an added reveal detail between the sill and the wall beneath. Shadow lines are important in this composition. The thin mullions, dark sill line, shadows in the structure above, and reveals are all tightly controlled and intentional. The stone extension jam in this example forms an entire reading alcove. The architects lined the incised window opening in a honed stone, placing emphasis on the depth and the solidity of the stone mass to form the wall. The effect is a break in the textured stone surface, but there's a logic to it. It appears the incision was carefully created just for this purpose, and the most tactile surfaces near the reading alcove were smoothed and worn to allow them to be sat upon or brushed against. Stone lends weight and solidity to any wall, but it comes at a higher price, so use it accordingly and cautiously. The trimmed frame of these openings is particularly beautiful. The window proportions seem derived from the module of stone that comprises the wall. The window has the appearance that a stone block was carefully removed to let light in. The trim treatment supports the lightness of the glazed insertion, but also highlights the thickness and monolithic nature of the stone wall. Lining the opening with steel allows maximum light into the space. The thin profile circumscribes the opening to precisely define the cut in the wall and also to provide a textural counterpoint to the rough hewn stone. Thin, light, and machined against the model limestone, the steel defines a logic for spanning openings in stone walls that is carried throughout the project. Many view steel as appropriate only in industrial or ultra-modern spaces, but as seen here, it can play well with all types of materials. Use steel when you're looking for slender, sleek, and thin profiles around your openings. Here we see a minimalist monochromatic white-on-white -white trim. I love that it's been clearly defined as part of the wall system and that its function is simple and direct. It's not designed to call attention to itself, 
It's simply covering the joint between construction components. A three-part systems approach is readily apparent. The wall and window system are one. Second is the floor system above, rendered in wood and clearly displaying how things are supported. And finally, the main floor plane is the third. The trim is blocky and sharp, matching the shaker-like detailing of the space. White on white doesn't compete for attention. It defers and plays well with others. Matching the trim to the adjacent wall finish works well when the goal is to highlight a particular surface and emphasize apertures rather than the trim itself. The openings appear as simple cuts in the plywood shell rather than openings framed in a contrasting material. The plywood wall finish is the star here, and the trim plays a supporting role in making the system read as a whole. Note that the wall to the right makes use of the same principle, rendering white on white. It's a great example of taking a single attitude toward trim and applying it uniformly everywhere, even when the materials vary. Monochromatic trim and wall treatments unify small spaces and can be used where fussy detailing either just isn't warranted, as in a camp, or is too costly. I really appreciate the set of rules the architects put in place here. By rendering the windows, walls, and ceiling in wood, they've removed the sense that any one thing in the architecture is more important than another. My eye is drawn toward the contrasting elements instead, the view, and the objects within. Fitting for this view, the window and door system is fully integrated into the structure of the room. The window frames are recessed into the floor and ceiling assemblies to give the appearance of a slot of space contained between the floor and the hovering ceiling plane. Omitting trim altogether isn't easy or cheap, but the results here make the effort worth it. So now we discuss about the storefront design. The storefront is the facade or entryway of a commercial locating on the street level. The storefront function is to attract visual attention to the indoor space. So means how the store can advertise in their work from the, this elevation. Storefront have to advertising the, the product. Um, the before the middle of 19th century, the shop front didn't have a large display window, but it features such as awning and bay window to attract attention of the people. You see the awning here, and then you can see the bay window is attract the people. You can see the more awning and the bay window here. However, nowadays this large, the sized the glass is available. So that's why nowadays this is a kind of a one, the single advertising moment. So they can actually expose the, their in, interior and the, their product to the outside, and the people just get in the attract getting into the space through the the these large opening storefront. So what kind of a storefront glass panel is used for? It requires using a temper the glass to protect the people on the ground level. It is requirement. So normal glass is broken as the sharp shard. But tempered glass, which is a safe glass, is four times stronger than normal glass. But also when it's broken, it also broken, it has to break into the small granule, the chunk, instead of a particle having the sharp angle like this one. Um, how are you making the tempered glass? Usually having the, the heat treatment over the normal glass, in making out the stronger glass, and then it also having the more safety glass compared to normal glass. So means you can just kind of find out this one in the storefront design. The also you can use in the disc glazing type for the, your bathroom design. Also you can just find out this image how you can hold in the disc glazing and how you can operate in the disc swing door. Usually using the disc patching work. You can see the disc patching, the connected glazing to glazing, and then. You can also recess the bottom patching into the floor, so that's why this is a recess the patching, and then they were some the holding the the dislocation to operate in the the swing door. So you can just see the this the patching and top, and and then this is the door side, and then simply connecting together to operate in the this swing door. There's lots of different accessories available. You can see depending on the your the design key you can choose in the proper the patching type also you can just find out the top and bottom condition simply the connecting the top and bottom to operating the this swing door 
However, if you don't want to expose the, these, the patching outside, it's totally recess the patching here. This is only you can see the glass here. But where is the patching? How it works? You can see the actually pass, patching accessory, the bottom and top. Be better to see here. You can see the, the patching top and patching at the bottom. And then this is a glazing system looks like this one. The degrading, the fabricating of this foam, okay, extruding the top and extruding the bottom. The, this top part actually you can connect to the top accessory and bottom accessory. And then you have uh, the recessed accessory here. Simply connect the, this one into the this here. And then simply connect the, this one into the here. So that's why you can easy to operating, easy to making operating the this swing door through the this the window grading system and then the recess the accessory top and bottom. So you can see the uh, another operable the panel which is a bypass door. So let's look at the, this bypass door. It recess the track the top and bottom. You can see the the bottom track and then you can see the top track here, and then you can open the both side. Okay, this is what we can call as the bypass door. So you can see the bypass door, how it works. You can see this is usually open the both side and then they stack the each side, right? And then you can see the track on the bottom and top. This track is kind of guiding to open the this bypass door for each side. Okay, this is uh, the bypass door profile. You can see the track on the top and track on the bottom. Of course, you can hide in the track from the, the your finish material, which is about the floor finish locating here. This exactly matching the this line, and you can actually add in the the window ceiling top here, the ceiling material, finish ceiling material. You can also hide in the this the window head and then uh, the head and the seal here. Okay, so this is you can find the gem here. Okay. Then this is simply open this side. But same thing, if you having the six panel, you can simply open the both side and stacking each other to making out of this big open space. What about the some pocket door? So pronto you can also consider as the pocket door. Pocket door simply making out of this pocket and when it open everything, you can open here and simply stacking into the this pocket space and then this you can make it more about the visually connection okay in this case most pocket door having the top track here okay this top track is operating the this the pocket door so you can just better to see in the this section here you see the this the recessed the rail on the top and then this is a wheel on the over the door and then this is simply clicking together to operating it you just kind of see that this example here, you see the the top track is recessed into that and then making out the pocket space and door simply open to this way. And the, you can see the door having the wheel. You can see the wheel. You can see the door having the wheel. And then top track. Actually, you can see the track here. And the track is kind of recessed into that. And then they actually operating into the pocket. The next type is the folding door store front design. Um, folding door requires the bottom and top track. It open to 90 degree and the stack to the each side. You can simply making the 90 degree and then stacking the each side. Okay, this is what we can call as the, the folding door. The next folding door, it is the horizontal folding door. It has similar operation system with a folding door, but it opens vertically. It is like about the parking garage door. It is open like this side. In this case, you can see the operation system here. And then you can also find out the, the track each side, which is the wall. It means they actually guiding the, this, the operating door to the, to the top. So using the, this horizontal folding door, this project, that they're using the this horizontal folding door system to making out the, this elevation design. It used the horizontal folding door having the perforated core tan, which is a weathering the metal creating. It is motorized and the folding up to forming the awning. So it means it usually closing down during the nighttime, they shut down 
but still perforation you can get in the lining from outside but during the daytime it's totally open but when they just open it it works as the sun shading device it just kind of protecting the direct sunlight from the outside but during the nighttime it's shut down it just kind of more of a secured area I think that is kind of very interesting idea using the, this horizontal folding door having the the, the transforming the, from the daytime to the nighttime having the different elevation and different facade design so you can see the operation system here so you can find out the track on the each side and you can also find out the motorizing system on the top and simply click on it it is open the vertically so it is similar the system you can just find out from here you can use better to understanding on the, you can find out here so this is a motorizing system and then this weight is coming down and then the whole thing is coming up and then it making an awning system from so i think that is kind of a interesting how you actually using this system to design your facade and another one i just kind of bring it this is a designed by orson kundig uh, this is more about considering about athletic machine so how they designing the this the horizontal folding door system as the part of the design part of the the mechanic athletic let's watch in the, this video together and then jumping to the next topic of the storefront So now we talk about the signage design. So when you design a storefront, you have to be considered about the signage. You have to be considered the location and assemblage idea before construction. Be because if you don't provide the signage location, when tenant staying here, they just put the their signage whatever they want. If for example when you think about, they just adding the Burger King here. For example, the burger here. And then it is kind of a effect the actual your the elevation design from the this region the two keeping the your the elevation and skin concept so you just kind of provide the signage location so this is uptown phase two project again so we just kind of provide signage location here this signage location is exactly the same proportion and same size as the window and a part of the skin strategy so you can see the example here this is a uh, the top and bottom it is a similar it's the same size as the window frame and then exactly the same size of the frame and then this is a signage location simply using the these anchoring together and bolting together to hold the this signage and also in the signage also you can add in the electricity here to making the 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 growing the lighting during the night time so so it means you just kind of provide this detail to the tenant. Tenant have to follow this policy and then you don't too much worry about it, the signage impact of your elevation design. Okay. And then this is also you can see the the, the signage location. They're just keeping the, this location for the, their signage. And then you can see the more signage location. The tenant will using the, this one for the, their signage. Okay, so let's look at the few case study today. Um, first case study. So let's talk about the, this case study. What is the finished panel material at the building envelope? So they using the zinc corrugated panel. When you open it, you can see the punched window. So it means they just came the privacy and then the protect the sun, the direct sun light. And then also just can ventilating when it open the this the metal panel. But interestingly, when you see the nighttime actual lighting, the growing diffusing from out, inside to the outside, what is happening here? So because it's hard to see from the, this photo, but when you see this photo detail, there were lots of a perforation hole. So from the, this region, the, during the nighttime, the lighting actually growing from the inside to the outside when you're turning on the light. Also, when turn in, when actually closing the this uh, the corrugated panel, the the lighting the passing through 
the this the perforation. So means you can actually the protecting the direct sun energy. However, still you can just get in the daylighting from the outside during the during the daytime. So you can see the more the detail here. They have a double skin system. The inside they actually having the similar the punched window detail here, but the outside they having the corrugated metal panel. So this corrugated metal panel open outside, and then this the punched window open inside. They the punched window and the panel having the same size, so that's why they just kind of perfectly matching the inside and outside layer to operating the, this system. So you better understanding about the plan here. They just using the corrugated panel, okay? And then they using the these inside the punched window. They open inside, and then outside outer layer. They using the aluminum panel. So this is the open outside. So this corrugated panel, the this continues from the this the solid wall system, but uh, during the night time they shut down, just keeping the privacy. During the daytime, they open and ventilating the air, and then also when shut down, this is a perforated metal to getting the some day lining. So this is a kind of a different function to the control the lining, control the privacy level. And then also this is another case study. Uh, the study say to which working on this project in San Francisco project name is Twinis Street Project. So when you see the project, you can see the the angled facade. So why the they we, why we designing about the, this kind of angle the facade here? So because some reason why the front of the, this building they having the old warehouse, but the designer try to maximize the view from the tenant but this side east side of the building has the ocean in san francisco that's why when you making the angle everyone just getting the the ocean view rather than just kind of uh, having the view in front of the this building which is the warehouse so when you see from the bottom to top you can see the this the angle and then this view actually provide the ocean view from the every single unit. Also, you can just see the from the, this image from the building. You can see the way old warehouse, but when actually standing here and the sofa here, you can actually see the view, the ocean view from here. You better understanding about the, this plant here. So you can see the unit. They have four unit per floor. One, two, three, four, and then the from view you see the this angled elevation, and then this one is kind of open to the the ocean view okay and then they have a two egress here and the one elevator and then this common passageway so let's see the detail out for this part so you can see the elevation design how we make an angle how we detailed out so we just kind of uh, looking it out uh, this one detail and then you better to see the this detail design here so this one actually exact same the creating system so you can see the inside the gypsum board paint the finish and insulation here and then we using the wood frame here and then we adding the sheeting which is a cover board and then to protect the cover board adding the, the waterproof membrane and then adding the this metal creating system but interestingly how you can designing about this angle so we actually adding the this triangular wood blocking here and then this wood block to making out this angle. Making the wood block and then adding the window frame and then simply just adding the same way to adding the this window, punch the window unit. Okay. So I just kind of de-erase everything and then you can just kind of zoom in. You better to see the detail. So you can just find out that this way. So this one is a gypsum board and the insulation and then wood framing and cover board. This is a waterproof membrane and the cavity space and adding the, the metal panel. It is exactly the same, the stone and the brick banner system. That's why I just keep asking you to memorize it. When you know, you can easily to apply any types of the creating system for your design. Anyway, after that, to making the angle, so we just kind of using the, this blocking. It's an angled blocking. This is support and holding the this angled glass. So that's why making out the these the angled and triangular shape blocking and adding the framing and adding the this window system to making out the this angle. 
First, you can see the detail. So this is a waterproof membrane. And the bottom of this one, you have to be overwrapping because you remember about the, when you're having the joint, we always having the two, the waterproof membrane together to protect in a corner condition. That's why waterproof membrane here and then another waterproof membrane have to be overwrapping together to protect in the this corner condition. Same way, you can see that this is waterproof membrane and then another waterproof membrane, the bottom of the uh, bottom of the uh, window seal and then it has to be protected in a corner condition but if you don't have this one, it's one in one waterproof membrane it's water very easy to getting into the space however, you having the two layer the one layer here and another layer here so this is double layer is overwrapping together to protect in this corner condition this angle the waterproof membrane the protecting the this corner condition and then this joint this waterproof membrane overwrapping the protecting this condition here so you can just kind of understanding about how you actually detailed out the corner condition and detailed out the corner condition. So when you just simply understanding about the Benio wall system, it is very easy to understand and adapt to the, this condition from the, this basic idea. Okay. So now I just kind of we watching the very last video. It is talk about the smart window. I don't know. We need a smart window for the house. I don't probably don't need it, but. I think about the technologies keep changing and then you have to be keep eye on it how you adapt this technology to the your the design the, in the future okay so let's watch the, this video and then today we more to discuss about the different window type but especially we focusing on the storefront design and also we focusing on the the punch the window design and then well, some of what we can really also looking at the some of the detail and different types about the storefront design and different types about the 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 punch the window the design okay and then basically from this concept we more to discuss about the cartoonal design next semester and then next year we more to discuss about the the window detail design okay so thank you so much for today and then you just kind of uh, the working on the lab assignment after the class if you have any question please stay here and uh, let me know if you have any other question you guys this is my favorite thing of the show this is the samsung transparent smart window so it looks like a normal screen but i can actually do things like make this blinds so i can close the blinds i can actually see through to the little town outside if i want to hit widget i can check out twitter i can check the forecast for vegas this is so freaking cool. This is future technology right here. It's a one-sided pane, which means people can't walk by your kitchen window and see what you're looking at, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I know that it's going into uh, the coming months, their mass production in the coming months, so we're going to start seeing stuff like this ASAP, and I'm pretty excited about it because, well, quite frankly, I feel like I'm in Minority Report, and that's really awesome.